So I'll go ahead and get started. I, I know people you know, probably want to know who I am, and so here's a little bit of information. I started my banking finance career in 1994. There's been lots of changes you know, through that career. I was a partner in a lending firm, won a national award and top sales through a bank. But what I've learned is, you know, hands-on and what I've read, what does and does not work to ensure success in business. So, um, and it's always a continual learning process, which is quite exciting for me. But um, I know Vivica has been a guest for you before as the LinkedIn expert. And so her and I, we went ahead and created this because so many people came to us and they're on social media and they really don't know how to get started or reboot because so many people are on social media and really don't know what they're doing on social media. Would you agree with me, Scott, on that one? Absolutely. You know, I, 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 think it's, I think it's maybe the fear of it, maybe the fear of failure, the fear of um, not knowing where to start. I think there's a lot of different reasons um, why the, you know, some animosity and fear of it. I, I, I would 100% agree with you, yeah. I think yeah. it's mostly the, the where to start kind of thing is, mm -hmm. is what the biggest holdup for most people would be. Exactly. We hear from a lot of people, we don't know what we're doing, where to spend our time or energy or, you know, how to even create an action plan. So that's our goal for everyone today is to create an action plan and then from there figure out where to spend most of your time on social media because we know time is valuable. So first of all, there's a few questions out there. Um, you know, we ask people how many are currently using social media to market their business? How many have thought about using it to market their business? And how many are using Facebook personally? Almost everybody would say that they are. If, if they're not, you really need to be, um, especially after today. You're going to learn some amazing statistics. Um, and then some people don't have a Twitter account just because they don't care what people are having for coffee or having coffee this morning. We've heard that common response. So even though that may keep you off Twitter, you really should be on Twitter as well and LinkedIn. So this picture right here gives a pretty good visual. Look at all the social media sources out there uh, right. that right. people go to. And, you know, we can't cover all of them, but we are going to cover some of the main ones. Um, because somewhere someone's going to be looking for information and you want to be listed in that correct place. So here are some questions to ask that you can say yes to. So in your business, do you know why you do what you do? And that's so important well, because, because... I mean, that's a tough one, I think. I mean, that's a tough yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you really have to know why are you in real estate? Why are you in lending? Um, you know, where's your passion like? Why are you doing this? Because once you know your reason why and your passion, it'll really help you go further in your business. You know, Jessica, the one, the one thing I do when I ask myself that question, because a lot of it's like, okay, I, uh, you know, I do what I do to make money, but it's so much more than that. It's to, to, to provide for my family, to, I mean, there's so many, you got to go really deep with that one. I, I mean, that could be the number one question of the whole class. And mm -hmm. I think once you figure out why you do what you do, if it's not if it's not exciting to you or it's not a passion or a love that you do, then it may not be a good fit for you to do, you know what I'm saying? So it's really, really important to think, figure out that first question. Exactly. And I've watched people on social media and, and some do a very good job on being clear why they're passionate in real estate. And it really comes through. And someone's more apt to do business with someone who has that clear vision versus someone who just maybe post a listing and says, oh yeah, I just helped someone buy a house. You're not going to hear that passion or that why through it. Right. Um, another important thing is, does your company or business have a mission statement? You know, it's very important to know who you are and what you do. And this one I love, do you know the unique selling point of your product or service? USP. USP. You know, if you can really fine-tune your specialty, your message will be much clearer on social media. And then the next one is, do you know who your customers are? You know, I know earlier you and I had a conversation. I had a customer who was very specific and said, I'm looking for males in this demographic. Um, you know, you got to be real specific who your customers are. And then what makes you different from your competitors? If you don't know what makes you different, how are you going to really stand out there on social media? So these are some really important questions for you to answer and they'll help you have a really clear image before you start or continue on social media. Here's another one. Do you know what your competitors are up to? 
Hmm, that's a good one. I love that one. So you yeah. can, so what you're saying with that one, could I swipe maybe what they're doing? <laughs> well, I don't know if I would swipe, but um, it's just always good to know what they're up to. You know, right. because if you think you have a unique selling point and they may say, well, so, so does this real estate agent. Right. You know, what really makes you, you know, different from your competitors? And do you know what's hot in your industry right now? Foreclosures. <laughs> <laughs> Probably depending, you know, and if foreclosures are hot in your area, you know, market that. Yeah. Because if that's what people want to hear, then you have to make sure that you're servicing what people want to know about. Good point. And do you have anything interesting to say? This one is so common. We'll we'll discuss that later on. I've had I have a real estate agent as a client. She goes, I have nothing interesting to say. Oh my. So we went ahead and created a plan of action for her to find interesting things to say and I, you know and the thing with that is I mean the, the big point about that is you are who you are uh-huh other people will be attracted to that so you can't pretend you can't make stuff up you have to let go of who you are and let that out there so people can get to know you like you and trust you for who you are not who they want to maybe think you are exactly so we really dug deep into her hobbies her interests um, and then also, you know, again, going back to what is your specialty in the real estate industry? What do you have to offer? And her specialty was foreclosures. Okay. Um, so anyhow, so we created a plan of action for her. So the magic formula to social media success is know who you are. Know what you have to sell. And know what's happening in your industry. You want to perceive yourself as the expert in your local area and know who your customers are and then know what your customers want. And you know, I really enjoy this one. It may just be about asking your friends or social media, you know, what would you like to hear or know about in real estate or lending? And then have information they might find interesting. Um, I have someone who came to me and said, we love coming and looking at your page on a daily basis because we know that you have good, interesting stuff for us. So, and if we miss a day, they'll reach out to us and say, where's your interesting information? So you really got to have information that people want. And then you got to share the content. Like you mentioned earlier, Scott, so many people get scared or nervous, but you got to be sharing this information. Yeah. And this is my ultimate favorite. Listen, listen, listen. You know, and I almost, uh, I almost stole your thunder on that. On number five, you said, know what your customers want. Well, if you listen, 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 they will tell you what they want, or they will tell you how they want to be interacted with or communicated with or that type of thing. So that's just, yeah, that's so important on that, on that aspect. It's so important. I see people on social media who just always talk, but they're not interacting with people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really about interacting. And so it's just a tool, just like your telephone or computer. Um, so step one, write down who your niche market is. If you're so generic, pick, I think. Right? I mean, right pick, I mean, you need to pick something. Yes. Out, so like that's part of your elevator speech, would you say? Or like, who, who are you when somebody asks who you are? Yes, you've got to be really specific um, on your niche market. Because if you tell people, oh, I just help people buy a house or list their home. Right. You know, that, that just doesn't appeal to majority of people. Um, step two, we thought this was a fun picture to catch everyone's attention. So make a list of all the things that your niche customer or client base is interested in. What, what do they want to know or where are their hobbies or interests? You know, I know some people who have a niche market with people who are into golfing. Yeah. So talk about real estate a little bit and a lot about golfing. You know, I just, um, you know, going back to that last picture there, that, I mean, uh -huh. you know, my little aha moment was whatever your niche is, and it may not be something to do with real estate, it may be something to do with DAOs. I mean, so if it's something to do with DAOs, make that a group uh, on social media that you talk about. Like I was just in Chicago and we went to the, the DAO store that everybody goes to to see there, the American, uh -huh. American DAO. Well, that's your passion. That's what you love. Make that a group of people that like that stuff. And now you have an amazing database where you guys can collaborate and interact and engage on something that's passionate to them and you. 
Yes, you are correct. Um, I'm a big fan of hairless cats. I actually had one. Carl and has one. I love that thing. I love that thing. Yeah, he's two now. <laughs> Aw. And um, so, you know, when I focused on that niche, it was amazing how many people who loved the hairless cats came to me. Interesting. Yeah, so really fine-tuning. You know, because people want that connection. They want to know that they have certain things in common with you. Excellent. So this takes us into step three. Do you know people who are influential to your customer base or in your industry? Where do you find them? Um, you know, if you have someone who is a rock star in your community in real estate or lending, you know, look at them. You know, doesn't mean you follow exactly what they do, but they're doing something right and can give you some pretty good ideas. So step four, write down all the keywords or search terms that your customers or clients might type into Google in order to find a company like yours. And so, you know, Google has that tool, and it's fascinating when you put in a certain word, you know, you can put in Kalamazoo real estate. You yep. can see how many people are searching, is that a high term, low term? You don't want to have a super low term that people are not searching for. You don't want to be talking about it. And this is really important. Um, I'm discovering right now on Google, Google Plus, if you use those terms in there, it puts you pretty high up in the rankings in a search. As far as like when you like set up your blog or website or something like that, when you actually find what your niche is and then find out what people are searching for within your niche? Yes, you want to incorporate in your blog, but then you also want to post your blog article on Google Plus and okay. use those keywords. So for example, you know, let's just say Kalamazoo real estate is a high search term. Okay. Um, you could put latest information on Kalamazoo real estate in your Google Plus page with a link to your blog. I'm finding that that's getting people very high up in the search engines. Okay. Like, for example, one topic right now would be 2013 business plan. Yes. Because that's like a really high, I mean, it's got to be, I mean, that's what people are looking for right now is some, you know, a plan, in, you know, how to put a plan in place. That'd be a high search term right now where people were searching for. So if you wrote an article in relation to that, you might get found as, you know, like maybe your plan is to buy a home in 2013. Well, uh -huh. put a plan in place right now. That's just, I'm just giving a throw an idea out there of what kind of what you're referring to. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Because if you put those words in your Google Plus page, it puts you pretty high up there in the rankings. Excellent. Yeah. So step five, do you know where your customers are and where they're talking to you? And do you know where and how they're finding you? You know, start asking people, how did you find me? Right. A lot of people, it's, it's amazing to me, I'll talk to, for, I'll just use this as an example, a real estate agent. Well, how did this person find you? And they'll say, I don't even know. Well, you've got to keep track where people are coming from, especially when you're utilizing social media. Yeah, that, that's really important to start keeping track how people are finding you because you'll start seeing a pattern. Now, my personal favorite is Facebook. I've gotten a lot of business off Facebook. Um, but I know some people, it's been LinkedIn or Twitter. Another thing, too, is when you start asking and start tracking, you got to have certain ways to track it. And we've talked about different ways to do that with different email addresses or different ways to find out when they email you or call you. Once you start learning where they're coming from, that's where, personally, I would focus my funds. If I was to spend money on marketing and I have people coming in through Google or finding me on the front page of Google or finding me on LinkedIn or finding me on Facebook, that's where I would start spending more of my time and more of my money. Exactly, but it is amazing how many people do not keep track of that. Yeah. Unbelievable. So anyhow, so that's step five. So step six, um, again, write down the names of some competitors, or I like to call them in social media comparables. This is really important because you've got to be ahead of the game and know what they're up to. You know, there's enough business for everybody, but you just really got to know what they are up to because you, you don't want to have someone throw you a, you know, a ball and, and hit you and not realize, oh, this person is marketing this and offering this and I'm not even anywhere comparable to that. You know what I mean? Yep, absolutely, absolutely. So now you have your foundation. So step seven is choose the social media site that you want to get started in or improve in. It might not be a social platform you're comfortable in, you know, and as we learn the statistics and some of the different social media platforms, 
I've had people say, wow, I had no idea my ideal client is in this social media platform and I'm not familiar with it, but they're going to get familiar with it. Mm -hmm. So you do want to be on all social media sources, but the next question is which one should you give majority of your attention to? You know what I've done, and maybe this is the wrong thing to say, but if I want to get good at, say, Facebook, mm -hmm. I, go, I go to Google, and I Google how to use Facebook as a real estate agent, how to okay. use LinkedIn as a real estate agent. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a bunch of different people commenting and sharing their ideas on how they use specifically Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or uh, Pinterest and you go mm, I like it I don't like it it's me it's it's not every I mean every single person that shares something with you is not going to be for you but mm -hmm. you're going to get you may get one little tidbit or one little idea that you're like man that's a good idea I'll, I'll I'm going to use that but I'm going to use it maybe over here or over here I'm going to maybe tuck that away and go okay I just want to learn more about it and get comfortable with it before I just go gangbusters with it that type of thing that's always done me wonders yes exactly you know and that's what's so amazing what you do here is you're offering education to people and they might take away that one aha moment exactly and incorporate it in their business plan right so um, so definitely you know take the time we talk about that through our free ebook at customer wow project it's so important to take the time to learn if you're not taking the time to learn how can you ever grow or wow anybody you know um, so we're going to get into Facebook facts and figures. This was compiled as of April 2012. So here's just some basic statistics. Uh, now there's 850 million people on there. 250 million photos are uploaded every day. <laughs> and we're, we're going to discuss the reason behind that in a little bit. But I found this really fascinating. 20% of all page views on the web are on Facebook. 20% of page views, so 20% of all the social media sites? Of all page views on the whole Page internet. views, that's like, a, a the page world. view, th that's a staggering statistic. 20% yes. of everything being viewed on the internet is coming from Facebook. Yes. <laughs> Think about the billions of pages being viewed on the internet every single moment of every day. Huh. Yes, and it's crazy how many people. I have a client who was shocked someone came to them and said, oh, before I did business with you, I researched you on Facebook, saw we had mutual friends, now I feel comfortable. Um, That's common practice. That is a common practice in any business, whether it be a real estate transaction or you know, finding the right, the right person to be your dry cleaner in your neighborhood. People are researching who their business owners on, are on Facebook these days. Exactly. You know, you know, Jessica, you just said something that like really hit home with me, and I, I just you kind of brushed over, and I want to make sure everybody heard this. So clients go to Facebook to see who their mutual friends are. So, for example, I want to work with Jessica, and I go to Jessica's page, and I see that I'm with, I have 17 mutual friends. I could very easily go to each one of those 17 and go, hey, you know, would you work with Jessica as a real estate agent? You know, and they go, oh, she's just a friend of mine. I've never done business with her. But one might go, oh, my God, I'd use her every single time. That's where you're going to – I mean, that's where this world is going. I'm telling you right now, and they said in 2013, that part right there, the mutual friends part, is going to be bigger than Google, bigger than anything on earth because people want to work with people they know, like, and trust. And if I don't know, like, and trust you, I'm going to go with somebody that does to ask their opinion about you and, and, then, and, and then make my decision from there. Exactly. And this client of mine, he was laughing because he avoided the social media world. And he was shocked how important it was in his business. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so this is you know some pretty important information about Facebook right here. 425 million mobile users. Yeah. And there's 100 billion connections. And, and this is really interesting, too, that I don't even know if I'm saying right, but Zingma's game, I don't play that game. Um, but if those type of game players are your ideal clients, I actually have a client who that is their ideal client, believe it or not. Um, so Zingma's Facebook market. is their source yeah. because they're trying to find these game players. 12% um, of Facebook's total income is from this game. Wow. 
So if, if you're a real estate agent who's heavily in the online games, well, great. Yeah, you know, then you need to be. Yeah. yeah, this would be the place to be. There's 2.7 billion likes per day, and 57% of users are female. Wow. All right. Okay. To go so, along with that, I discovered I was doing some research a couple of weeks ago and found that 70% of online users in the U.S. are on have are on Facebook are active users on Facebook. So 70% of the people who have the internet access in their home are on Facebook and using it. Mm -hmm. And to go along with that, you'll see in North America, just a little bit over 50% of the population uses and, Facebook. And, and notice that that number, we are the largest group of users as far as the percentage of population. We are the biggest group of users on, on Facebook. Wow. We, we are. And I do foresee it growing in other parts of the world as the connections keep growing. Right. Um, and then over here, you can go ahead and see that the average person spends 20 minutes on Facebook. A day. I would assume that's per day. It says per visit. But a lot of people do check in, especially since it's on your phone these days. <laughs> I was going to say per hour. I was going to say per hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there, there are some Facebook addicts out there. I've read, I've read articles on that. Um, and then again, here goes with the top 10 most popular games. You know, I, I don't play the games, but I know of some people who play Farmville and get to know other people and establish relationships, you know? Wow. Yeah. Chronicles. So, okay. So, Facebook. Um, this is what I find really interesting. I wanted to show on Facebook and money. Look at that net income in 2011. And look where a lot of it comes yeah. from in that game and advertising. Let's see here. Mark Zuckerberg's salary, two twenty-four billion. Mark Zuckerberg's personal worth, Facebook stock, Facebook covers data, Facebook files for initial public offering. Where's the gaming? Where's the game? Oh, right here. Oh, so signals. Oh, wow. Okay, advertising and then other. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And so, like, like I mentioned earlier, I have a client that is their ideal client. So Facebook is where they need to be spending their time. Right. Huh. So, um, yeah. So now we'll get into Twitter. There's over 465 million accounts and 175 million tweets a day. So 1 million accounts are added to Twitter every day. It's growing. Um, this is important to know the top three countries are USA, Brazil, and Japan. Hmm. And the busiest event in Twitter's history is now Castle in the Sky TV screening. 20, over 25,000 tweets per second. Jeez, never even heard of that. Isn't that sad? <laughs> well, now you have something to look at. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, if that's your ideal, you know, customer, someone who's into Castle in the Sky and Super Bowl and um, in America, Brazil, or Japan, you should be on Twitter. You know what's funny about that is um, we, we were driving home one day from an event, and I was with my family, and my kids were in the back, and we were wondering if Detroit, we had left something, and we the, the Detroit Tigers were playing back in the day, and I asked Greg, I said, hey, um, Who's, you know, could you look it up? He goes, well, Brett just tweeted that the Tigers won or lost. I don't remember what if they won or lost. But so, like, that's, I mean, it's so easy to get instant up-to-date information through your Twitter account. It's, it's just crazy in that respect that that's where he's hanging out. He's 17. He's almost 16. But my daughter's 17. That's where they hang out. That's where they get up-to-date information 24-7. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's going to get there. It's just not, you know, our age group isn't there yet. Yeah, Facebook is more my favorite, but I know some Twitters are favorite. And and I'll go to Twitter. I know you're a big fan of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette show. And I'll yeah. go on there, and I can't wait to know who, who won. So. All right, all right. I'll go on there and find out. But, um, but yeah, Twitter is, is a lot of information for facts, short, brief facts. And we'll talk a little bit more in a little bit about who should be on Twitter, um, spending most of their time there. So LinkedIn, I know you guys had Vivica. She was an amazing expert, um, you know, but I just want to go over some statistics here. It started in 2003, but what I find fascinating is two new members join every second. Wow. And the USA is leading in membership right now. But look at this. 60% of its members live outside the USA. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Um, and then in 2011, there were 4.2 billion 
professionally oriented searches on the LinkedIn platform. So people are using it. And the revenues are growing. But LinkedIn is the 36th most visited website in the world. And it's, it's more commonly used to look to hire someone or someone looking for employment. Uh, that's where, yeah, that's where we go. When we were looking for, to find some talent in a certain area, we'll go there and search. There's, I mean, their search criteria is uh, uh, amazing, how you can really narrow it down to exactly what they do. Mm -hmm. call, and, and, then, and, of course, if people are out there and they want to, uh, that's where LinkedIn, I think that's, don't they say, um, Jessica, that that's where they fill out the most, um, the, 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 the best profile is on LinkedIn because they want people to know who they are and what they do? Like exactly, yes. Filled mm -hmm. out, okay. Yes, you need to take some good time and have a robust profile because it is so keyword specific like you mentioned earlier. Okay, so here's a whole visual picture of it. You know, you, you can even look at other parts of the world. Um, you know, look at USA 57 million, Canada has 4 million, and the UK has 6 million. So it is, and India has 11 million. Crazy. Uh -huh. So this is a whole visual snapshot of just what we went over. So YouTube, lots of questions about YouTube, and there's some fascinating information here. I, I find very fascinating at least, but there, it's the third most visited website according to Alexa. It handles 10% of the Internet's traffic. So if you're fine-tuning between the age group of 12 and 34, 44% of YouTube users are between that age group. But look at this number. This one blew my mind away. 78% of traffic is outside the US. Hmm. So I have some YouTube videos and that may explain why I have people in other countries always reaching out to me. Um, I think it's through YouTube. <laughs> All right. Isn't that funny? Uh, yeah, and so yeah, 78% of the traffic out is outside the United States. I get a lot of traffic from YouTube just because there's uh, so few of my competitors that do video marketing. Mm -hmm. So to connect, I mean, it, it's so powerful. I mean, we can go on and on about video marketing, but video marketing is just a way to, you know, we t and we had Frank Garay on a while back where he's, you know, one video, you kind of put up their marketing equity so people will eventually, like, you're going to get more and more views all the time, especially if you keep doing it. I can't uh -huh. stress that enough to some way, shape, or form. This is like, is YouTube still third or has it lost ground to Pinterest? I think it's still third largest. It's the third. Pinterest is number two. Yeah, okay. Pinterest is number two. So, all right. Facebook, is it Facebook, Pinterest, and then YouTube? Yes. Okay. The last, the last statistics, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and again, that makes sense. I love Facebook. That's how I receive majority of my business, and I personally coach people on how to get business off of it. So okay. all right. So Pinterest. <laughs> facts and figures. It's it's amazing how many people come to me and say, I still don't understand Pinterest. Right. Um, and you know, I'm sure that it's gonna keep growing because it is a fun way. We're so visual. So many of us are visual. Huge visual. Um mm -hmm. and this is this is really good for anybody in real estate. You know, you want to come across as the expert in your community. And it doesn't have to be homes you have listed for sale. It could be, you know, different designs and styles and ideas that someone may come for inspiration. Um, so I found this. So in January, it's driving more referral traffic to retailers in LinkedIn, YouTube, and Google+. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. I don't. I'm. I'm trying to figure why that is. I mean, why is it because of the retail stores are using it so heavily, or somebody that has a physical product, the people were able to see it, like kind of like looking at a magazine. You think? Yes, we're we're visual people. Right. So that's why it's quite popular. But this is interesting. Ninety-seven percent of the sites Facebook likes are by females. And there was another stat out there. Um, that 26% of Pinterest users make six figures or more a year. Let's say that again. Say that number again. 26% of Pinterest users are making six figures or more. 26%. So mm -hmm. do we know how that relates to LinkedIn? Because I know LinkedIn has a higher average income than does 
Facebook. And Facebook is lower, LinkedIn is higher. I wonder how that relates to LinkedIn, I wonder. I don't know. That's a really good question. But that was a statistic I learned recently. It's not up here, but I just wanted to share that. You know, if you're looking for the female market, this is where you need to be. Hmm. Yeah. So all you single guys out there. <laughs> yeah, you not need to single start ladies, pinning. single guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to start pinning. Um, so Google Plus facts and figures. This one is so new and there's lots of questions. It was launched on June 28th of 2011. So it reached 10 million users by July 14th. Okay, of 2011. And again, 67% of Google Plus users are male. So if, you're, if your market's the male market, this is where you need to be. And for buying homes, that wouldn't be the place because the woman makes the decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Okay. Um, so it's gaining 625,000 users per day, and the anticipated number by the end of this year is 400 million. Crazy. So if you're selling pole barns, this is the place to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, and and the reason why Google Plus is so good, as I mentioned earlier, I'm finding that it's going high up in the search engine. So if you post um, information on Google Plus, just like you would on Facebook, it's putting you pretty high up there in the rankings. So play around with it sometime. And it's, a, it's amazing to me, I researched out in Colorado, some different areas, how many real estate agents are not utilizing Google Plus. Yeah. This one's huge. And I will tell you this, I'm talking to people that they are selecting their real estate agents based off of Google Plus. Okay. It is happening. So, so Google Plus, um, if you look at the top 10 occupations, over 20% are students. Students in college? Um, I don't know. It just says students. I would assume I would probably. Imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I would imagine college. But look, software engineer is next. Hmm. So if that's your ideal client to have a software engineer or consultant, yeah. they like to be on Google+. Plus. But look at the top 10 cities. I mean, look, there's L.A., New York, Houston, San Fran. Um, they're, they're on Google Plus quite a bit. And, you know, it even breaks it down to relationships. How many are married versus single? Majority of people on Google Plus are single. Hmm. Single 42%. Okay. Yeah. They even have it broken down to how many are widowed. So, again, going back to the beginning of having a good foundation, who is your ideal client? So, so like, like for this one, I mean, so if you're looking, like, because a lot of times we talk about Facebook marketing to – People, because you can you can state your status, you know, where it says engaged. Mm -hmm. So in Facebook, where in Google Plus, it's just single. So that, I mean, a great market to where you could market to a specific crowd, knowing that forty two percent of the people on there are single. They're gonna yes. get either engaged or married, which signifies buying a home or selling two homes and getting one type thing. Yeah, and, and it makes me think of a development. What if you have a development? that you're representing and they say, you know, this development appeals to single people, you know, professors and software engineers. Boom, this is where you need to be, you know? Higher end. So like engineers obviously higher end, higher loan mm -hmm. amounts. Yeah, right. Yeah. So this just gives, you know, a visual of the facts and figures. And then this goes through the history of, you know, Google. And the reason why I show this again, we're all visual. And it shows how fast, because look at July 14, 2011, on the left top hand side, 10 million users. By December 31st, 2012, it's expected to reach 400 million. But look, look right above that, January 26, 2012, it's open for teenagers. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So teenagers can now get on there. Crazy. Which, why is the number jump so much? Or it should jump, yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, so which social media site is best for me? That that's was going to be my very next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome because we're going to answer it. And so this will just give you a basic idea. Facebook, if you're in a business that has a database and is relationship-based. So I list some examples, chiropractors, car sales, real estate agents, loan officers. If you are in a 
relationship-based, you know, service business, you need to be on Facebook. And then Pinterest, if you have a tangible product or something that someone can see, such as coffee, picture frames, pottery, or housing. Okay. Twitter, I love Twitter if you are in a relationship-based business but don't have a database. This is where you start developing those relationships. And I've received relationships off Twitter that then move to the next phase of Facebook, and it goes even deeper. Okay. And then YouTube and Google Plus if you're trying to be higher up in search engines when someone looks for business. Okay. But the statistics show that you're going to do better if you focus on your current sphere of influence. You know, if you're out there just trying to always get the next new client out there, mm -hmm. you're going to waste more time and money versus nurturing and taking care of the current relationships, which is Facebook. Amen to that, yes. So... And we always talk about, Jessica, we always talk about that. Like when you build, when you get a new borrower, get a new client, that's the first thing I do is go friend them on Facebook. Yes. They just look forward to working with you and getting to know you a little better, you and your family or whatever. That's where the communication starts because that's where we all know they're going to spend time there. So for me, um, you're going to probably cover the next couple. Like, so are these, so like for me, I'm big on Facebook. I'm big on, huge on YouTube. And, I, and I'm also, big on Google Plus. One of the one you didn't cover for me is uh, Instagram, which okay. you might as well just put that with Facebook because Facebook owns it. And you, yes. I don't know if you've seen Instagram lately, yes. but it looks, if you go to your profile, it looks a lot like Facebook. It has yes. the header with all your pictures and it has all the pictures below it. But it's just a really quick, easy, fun way to collaborate and interact with people that are, you know, visual. It's visual pictures. It's all it is. You can comment and stuff like that. So that's another one for me that ties into Facebook as well. Exactly. And Instagram, it's, it's a combination of, in my opinion, like a Pinterest, but it's a personalized Pinterest because this is your actual photos. Correct. Your actual experiences that people want to connect and relate to you. Now, I got a, I got a question for you, and I, I didn't ask you this before, but I want to see what your thoughts are on it. Sure. Um, it I have, I've built a bunch of friends you know, on Facebook over, the, over a period of time. Okay. And I know a lot of them I don't even have never don't know don't have never like done business with of course a lot of a lot of them are relationships real estate agents and I was thinking how cool would it I mean how maybe there is not a way but I wish that I could like purge some of the people that maybe are friends of mine that really shouldn't be or not like not like close personal friends but you know how on LinkedIn you got one you got step one step two step three. Uh huh. What do you? I mean, do you have any ideas for purging some of the stuff? So you have a, a close, closer group of of friends on Facebook. Besides going, hey, anybody that doesn't like this post in the next sixty two hours or whatever, I'm gonna delete you up. You know, we're not gonna be friends. Or whatever. I mean, is there? A re I mean, I just think that when you said if we're in a real estate, we're in a, a database management like society where you know real estate agents and loan officers. The more we connect and engage with our database, the more referrals we're going to get because we get to know, like, and trust them, and they get to know, like, and trust us. So that was just kind of a weird question. I know it used to be the more friends you got, the more businesses you're going to get, and it's not the truth. The more close personal friends that know, like, and trust you, the more business you're going to get. You know, but, that's, an, that's an amazing question, and we cover that in our Facebook coaching. Okay. So you are correct. I did go through and purge a couple hundred because – you know, I'm only friends with people I truly have interest in. If you don't have, if you don't have that interest, <clears throat> excuse me, why even be their friend? Correct. Well, it just, I mean, it just clutters up your your wall. You know, like like the reason I like Instagram so much because I'm only following the people that I know, like, and trust that are friends of mine. So that's where it's fun to go on there and see those people and interact and like their stuff and comment on their stuff and that type of thing because we're you know we're connected. But if I was to follow three like three thousand people on Instagram, then it would be a mess because I wouldn't know what, what are these pictures. You know what I mean? They, they have no meaning or significance to them. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so for Facebook, we coach people. You know, you can create list. So just like in the real world, everybody has heard the term okay. "Who's your A client? Your B client? Your C client?" I love this. Okay. So why not create a list within Facebook for that? Because you you know time is limited. So let's say you only have five minutes one day to be on Facebook. Yep. You want to make sure you're giving that time and attention to your A clients. Okay. 
Okay. So you can click on your A client list and give them your attention for that day. But let's say the next day you have a little bit more time. You can then nurture the A and B clients. You see what I'm saying? Great, absolutely. So you set up yeah. groups. So you set up groups of people so you post to only those people. Um, I set up lists, and lists. so okay. then I can click. Okay. There's a difference. Okay. Um, you don't want to create a group, a group, because then some people may see you created it and they're okay. not in your A group. So a list is private, and okay. then All right. yeah, and make fun names. You don't have to call it your A, B, or C. I have some fun names out there, but um, so you can call it like your rock star list, and you can click on that list, which is your A clients. And then you can nurture and communicate with them for that day. Got it. Love. That's a great idea. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah, no, that was a great question. So step eight: consider other sources. This is this is fascinating. I had a client who came to me, and we listed them in some other these other sources, and they came to me shocked. They got as a client the Country Club from Manta. So. They were absolutely shocked that they got such a big client, you know, the country club, off a small little source. So you definitely want to be in other sources listed. Now, some of them may try and upgrade and sell you on a higher package, and none of my clients ever do that. Yeah. So I just wanted to give a snapshot of some other places. Manta is a big one out there, and definitely Yelp. Yelp is, I hear, I hear Yelp a lot, especially when you're traveling and you want to find a place to eat or you want to get recommendations from other people locally. That's a great place. I, I agree. And that's, I know someone who goes to Yelp to look, you know, up to see who to do business with. So you just never know where people are going to go. And someone may go to Manta or Yelp and say, okay, I want to look at, you know, doing business with this person. And then they may go to Facebook and see if you have the mutual friends and reach out to them. Right. It, it's a whole cycle. And then step nine, so if you're brand new to social media, create an account and use those keywords in the description sections, okay? If you already have accounts in social medias, I know we mentioned a little bit earlier, but really make sure that you have a good profile. I am so shocked how many people do not have on Facebook their About section completed. Uh-oh. They don't, they don't have where they work, <laughs> they don't have their contact information. Um, they don't have any keywords. I mean, I've seen some may just say real estate agent in this town. No phone number, no website, no link, nothing. Or it's fascinating how many people do have it linked up to where they work, but it's the wrong link and it always shows it's broken. So this is really important so you can be found. Um, and people know what you're doing. Good stuff. Yeah, you'll you'll start. I mean, just go through your sphere on Facebook, and you'll just start noticing that more. Um, okay, so step ten: see if your competitors are on social media. If they are, research what comments or articles are creating engagement. There you go. I love that. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you could be a real estate agent in San Francisco, and maybe look at a real estate agent in New York City, and just see what kind of you know, what's creating that interest? Yep. You don't want to stop them or copy them, but um, the goal is just to find out what do people want to hear or see. Well, what I do is what I do is I follow, like I, I follow certain people and I, and, and I go, okay, why am I following this person? Or why do I, what, why is this person inter interesting to me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and I go, okay, wh how do I, like, cause it, and it's mainly loan officers and real estate agents, so I'm like, okay, why, what makes me want to follow them? Well, they're kind of, they maybe they just let me into their lives and they let me get to know their family. They, you know, it's so like, okay, so that's a feeling that I like. So how can I portray the same thing to my clients, let them in on who I really am, where I visit, where I go. I mean, that stuff's important, you know, especially yeah. if I'm working with somebody and they can, they can see that I'm a real person. I have a real family. I have pets and I, I do take vacations and that type of stuff is real and I'm mm -hmm. not just – quote unquote business, that's, I mean, that's huge. That is huge. And a lot of people just sit there and post all about their business and people are going to start blocking you, ignoring you, deleting you. Correct. So, you know, you don't want to post too much personal information, which sometimes you see too, but you do want to post information that people can get to know who you are. I know you had a class before where Stacey, you know, mentioned where you check in. People like to see where you check in. Maybe you have that same common interest of um, a place that you checked into, maybe a restaurant, you know? Yep. 
And you know, and even it's all about helping people. I know you're a good example of that, Scott. And sometimes I'll check in the restaurants and say, "Hey, I just checked in to your restaurant. You know, um, are you utilizing social media?" So many of them have no clue how to utilize it or even what to do with it. I know. I know. So, um, so step eleven: find influencers and follow them. What are they talking about? What can you share? People like to see their articles shared. This is huge. Okay, um, people feel good. So, if you have your A list and you go in there and you see that someone posted a really good article, click on the share button on Facebook and share it because it makes them feel good. Absolutely. You know, somebody, a question was asked. Okay, I see all these stats. I see all like how, like all these social media sites. Where do I find content? Personally, a great place to find content is to find other people in your industry, maybe not in your same town, but other mm -hmm. parts of the world that are sharing content that is relevant or interesting to you. Uh -huh. and you go, okay, I get it, and start and you start living, eating, and breathing with those people, and you'll your your mind will automatically take over and like help you come up with content that has to do with what they're doing and then what you should be sharing as well. Exactly. And then the next question is, can you build a relationship with them? Interview them. So for example, if you want to get into this large corporation, reach out to some of the top people and say, hey, I would love to interview you for a blog. Isn't that a much easier way to get in instead of saying, hey, I want to do business with you? Yes. Yeah. Give them something about Yeah. Make them feel yeah. good. Find out about the company. Yeah, exactly. And here is the next um, answer. So Technorati, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but this is a good place to go ahead and start researching content. You don't have to create all your own content. A lot of people feel that they have to. But do make sure it's what people actually want to hear about. Technorati. So this, right. Yeah, this is a good place to go to for articles and information. So step 13, we have Vivica here as an example. Start sharing some interesting content. Once in a while, it's okay to pitch your own product or service, but you don't want to do it all the time. So that's, that's very key. Um, step 14, as you mentioned earlier, Scott, tell your customers and clients you're on social media. You know, um, utilize it in your email signature line. I try and make it fun. I have, you know, a coffee cup that they can click on and go to a social media site and actually start engaging with you. Okay, I have a new favorite site now called Technorati. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my God, there's so much content there you could like you couldn't get through it the rest of your life. So exactly, check that out. Check yeah, that out. yeah. I mean, you don't have to come up with everything on your own. No. And you know, you may find an article to inspire you and write your own. Correct. So, okay, here's that magic number: twenty percent of your audience as influencers will share eighty percent of your content. Okay. 80% of your content should be interesting, valuable, fun, or intriguing. 20% of your content can be used to pitch your product. Love that. Listen 80% of the time, talk 20% of the time. Love it. So as you're on there on social media, are you posting more or are you commenting more? Ooh, who's guilty? Everybody raise their hand, be honest. <laughs> hey, I've even been guilty before, so... So, yeah. Yeah. so remember this 80-20, all sorts of good info in the 80-20. Love that. Okay, so since it's the most popular, I know we're getting short on time, um, but this is really important. Say like this post if you agree, or share this post if you agree, or fill in the blank. You want to get people to interact with your post. Um, have contests to connect with people. You know best video, best picture, and have promotions and do pictures because that really engage. And keep it positive. Please do not post anything negative on social media. <laughs> right. Negative politics, sexual, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. So here's, um, I know we're running out of time, but this is Facebook page insights um, that goes into further detail about your business page and edge rank. Um, you can Google Facebook Edge Rank. It's an algorithm that nobody has the exact formula on it. But this is important to know um, that on the bottom here, according to Facebook, only 0.2% of all stories are published in the news feed. Good point there, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so this goes into the algorithm. 
Um, and again, so we talked about... If you go back and go, how does this affect me? What, what was that? Go back to a couple slides there, one more. Yeah, so most of your Facebook fans never see your status updates. According mm -hmm. to Facebook, only 2% of all stories, 0.2% of all stories published in the newsfeed uh, inside Facebook.com. Okay, so... So the less relevant or uh, or exciting or engaging it is, the, the, that number is going to be even less. Exactly, okay. and the the edge is how many people um, you know comment, tag, join a fan page, RSVP to an event. You know, Facebook has this algorithm on your business page. So if you want to be seen, you better make sure it's good stuff that people want to see and interact with you. Excellent. Okay. So this goes into um, a little bit more about that. I know we're out of time. But this one's fascinating. I've actually used this one and seen this one. Yes or no, I eat breakfast every morning. You know, people, people like to talk about themselves. Yeah. Um, or fill in the blanks or click like or, you know, you've got to create that engagement. And this goes into detail about advertising on Facebook and companies who have been very successful. Um, Look at Procter & Gamble. They think it's going to generate another $500 million in Facebook. Wow. wow. Experian encourages financial literacy and promotes savings through chatty questions and quizzes. They're really good about that. Yeah. Look at this. Ford says at the very bottom, they believe that someone who likes you on Facebook is more willing to advocate your brand. Well, what really kind of blew my mind, and this was, I think, a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I went to Facebook, and I went to, you guys got to check this out, go to Skittles Facebook page. Okay. And at the time, there's 23 million likes, almost 24 million likes on uh -huh. Skittles brand. I mean, so that's the, I mean, what you've talked about here the whole time is focusing on what's your niche, who's your ideal client. Skittles freaking nailed it. They said, okay, our client is kids. So let's target them. Here's a, here, I mean, they put up they, they updates from greatest fan in the world. It's day 14 and the Skittles still suspect nothing. There's 15, almost 1,600 likes and 27 comments. Sometimes there's, uh, here's 4,000 likes and it's just kids. Yes. Like, I mean, once you find your niche and your, where your people are hanging out, it gets so, it gets to be so much fun. And you get, so go check out Skittles. I mean, it's just crazy. How many people are there? 24 million kids across the U.S. and the world are on there, and they're commenting and having fun, and just—I mean, people that probably shouldn't even be on Facebook are on there <laughs> because they're not old enough, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's interesting. I'm not a Skittles fan, but my daughter, she loves Skittles. Yeah, I know. Uh, and so I know we're out of time, but there's different ads on Facebook. You know, people are all confused on what kind of ads. Um, but there's different ones. You've probably seen some of them. Some off to the right, some actually in your news feed. Some take you to a web page or click like. But I like this one on the bottom right, an example of a like ad. Um, you know, get free, you know, Christmas cookie mix half batch candle. Yeah. So, you know, it's a good incentive to like their page. Sponsored stories. So people like to read stories, be engaged with stories. So that's a really good way to do a Facebook ad. Um, so anyhow, so that's the end. I, I didn't want to take up too much time because I know we're right there three minutes away from one hour. <laughs>